Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to today's webinar on copyright ownership shares, the writer's share, and the publisher share. Um, I was looking at some of the places where everybody's from. It's really, really cool. Uh, before we get into the nitty gritty of today's topic, um, I want to give you a little bit about myself and my co-host, Elizabeth, uh, and what we do at SongTrust. I work in client services and operations. Um, I work directly with our clients. Um, I help manage their accounts, provide industry tips, and help them with managing their publishing copyright. A little background about myself. I'm originally from Virginia, 757 for those who know. Um, and while I live in there, I worked and trained as a classical vocalist. Five years ago, I relocated to New York City to, to pursue a legal career in rights management in the arts and entertainment industry. And I've been with Song Trust now for about a year and a half. All right, and my name's Elizabeth. Um, I'm on the same team as Pierre in client services. Um, I help answer questions about publishing and your Song Trust account. I've also been with Song Trust for almost a year at this point. And before this, I studied music business and production at NYU. And I am from Florida, I grew up playing piano. And so I always wanted to work in music and here I am. All right, so today's agenda, what we'll be going over today is understanding the difference between your writer share and your publisher share. Um, we will discuss how these shares are determined and who's responsible for collecting and paying out these shares, how your publishing situation can impact your ownership shares and what you will be earning. And you'll also get advice on how to avoid losing any percentage of your ownership shares as you navigate through the music industry. Thanks for that, Liz. All right, so every song has two copyrights. Um, you have your master recording copyright and you have your composition copyright. The master recording refers to the recording of a musical performance that can be played back or reproduced. And then the composition refers to the underlying composition of, the, of a song, so the music and the lyrics. Publishers handle the copyright of the composition and then distributors and labels handle the copyright of the master recording. Now publishers, um, they, we collect a host of royalties that are due to the copyright owners of the composition. Um, but today we're just gonna focus on two. We're gonna focus on performance royalties and mechanical royalties and who collects what. So the composition share is divided into two parts. It's divided into the writer's share and the publisher's share. Um, the writer's share is only uh, collected through performance royalties. And these royalties are owed to the songwriter and the rights owner of the composition. They are collected by collection societies throughout the world, such as ASCAP, BMI, and CSAC, specifically in the US, other societies, such as GEMA in Germany, SSM in France. There are many societies all over the world that collect these royalties. And creators are usually paid this share directly from the societies that I've just mentioned. And as I mentioned before, the writer's share is only a component of performance royalties. The other side of composition uh, copyright is the publisher's share. And this is paid out to publishers and these are collected by mechanical rights organizations, uh, that administer mechanical licenses throughout the world. Um, HFA in the US, uh, Medianet also in the US, Amcos in France. And these royalties must be paid out to a publisher. Um, it's not like uh, the writer's share where it's just paid directly to the writer. There needs to be an existing entity uh, to be paid out to. And there are three ways you can collect the publisher's share. Um, first way is if you are 100% independent and you do not have a publishing deal or a publishing administration deal, then you will need to create your own original publishing entity in order to collect your share. So you can either do this, for example, in the US, you can create a publishing entity with ASCAP or BMI. Um, yeah, if you're fully independent and you do not have any publishing, you'll need to do this in order for the organizations that collect these royalties to send them to this entity and therefore to you. The next way to collect publishing royalties is if you are in a traditional publishing deal. And if you have a traditional publishing deal, your publisher would be paid the publisher share of 
performance royalties and mechanical royalties directly from the societies. And they would receive the royalties and then pay it out to you, but they would also take um, a small percentage, um, which is again, like negotiated um, in the terms of the publishing deal. And then the last option is if you have a publishing administrator and using a publishing administrator, which is what Songtrist is, um, we would work directly with these collection societies and organizations around the world to collect and pay you your publisher share directly. So you would receive your percentage of the publisher share minus our commission, uh, since we do not maintain any ownership of your song. You would maintain complete ownership of your song. So much like Elizabeth mentioned, um, the writer share is typically paid out through the performance rights societies or your home collection society. Um, so a song has 100%, every song has 100% ownership in it, um, especially at the society level. Um, BMI does work off of a 200% model. Um, the way that is, is uh, 50, if you have, if we use the standard 100% model, excuse me, guys, 40% belongs to the writer and then 50% belongs to the publisher. If we use the BMI 200% model, 100% belongs to the writer and 100% belongs to the publisher. Now, when you're registering your songs in your song trust account, uh, please use the 100% ownership model, regardless of where you're affiliated at, affiliated at. Now, the word songwriter or writer by music industry standards is defined as any person who contributed to the creation of the song. So whether you're someone who you wrote the lyrics, um, you wrote the melody, you composed the score, you produced the underlying beat, uh, you are considered a writer. And so you have a writer's share in the song. With that being said, you would need to negotiate with your co-writers on the work what your share in that work is. This is uh, where split sheets become essential. All right, and now we're gonna talk about the publisher share, which I mentioned a little bit about before. Um, as I mentioned, there are three ways that you can collect your publisher share. Um, example one is if you are completely independent and you are not, um, you do not have a deal with a publisher, but you have your own publishing entity. So your home collection society would be responsible for collecting these royalties. And some of them, not all of them, for example, BMI can let you register 200% with complete ownership without having a separate entity, but this is something that's specific only to BMI. So in many other cases, uh, some of them require you to have a separate publishing entity in order to collect your publisher share. Um, the second example is that your publisher, you have a traditional publishing deal. And in that case, your publisher would be paid the publisher share directly from collection societies or the appropriate organizations tracking your song's usage. And in the last example is if you are, for example, a song trust client and we would be your publishing administrator and publishing admins work directly with societies and organizations around the world. So we would collect all the publishing royalties for you and then you would receive it in your song trust account and you would be paid out every quarter, just like um, a normal collection society. And again, uh, just to specify with traditional publishing deals and publishing administrators, um, there is a fee that depends, you know, the main difference between a traditional publishing deal and a publishing administrator, it can vary by deal length, um, your commissions, um, how large their catalog is, and whether or not they provide any creative and sync services. It, yeah. I also know that we have some non-US clients. Actually, we have a lot of non-US clients. And so things look a little different um, outside of the US. I know that there's a thing called the author's share, which typically represents the writer's share. Then there's the composer's share, which usually represents the producer's share, and then a the, uh, publisher's share. When you're registering your works um, in your song trust account, um, you wanna use just the writer's share and publisher's share model. Um, 
and you want to negotiate those splits with your co-writers. Uh, this is because you know copyright law and intellectual property law vary by territory. So just again, you want to use the writer share publisher share model when you're registering your works in your trust account. Mm -hmm. Now, um, Liz, I want to kind of talk about what, uh, how that registration would look at the society. So like at a PRO, if I had a publishing entity, I had, you know, Pierre Music LLC, um, and I, but I had Song Trust repping my publishing entity. How would the registration look at, let's say, ASCAP? Okay, so for example, if you are registered at ASCAP and your songs are registered to ASCAP by Song Trust, um, you could go into ASCAP's public repertoire, search the name of the song, and the song information would come up. And in the publishing section, it would list your original publishing entity, you know, like Pierre Music LLC or whatever the name of your publishing entity is. And if you click on that, Song Trust's information appears in the care of section. So your publishing entity name is the primary name listed, but we will also appear on the information as the main point of contact. So if we need to be contacted for any reason regarding your publishing. We will be contacted first, and then we will then let you know. We will forward whatever inquiry is to you, and that is how you will receive that information. So that would be a great example if you have independent publishing. Cool. I can't tell you how much, how many times I actually kind of I get that question. So that's why I wanted. Uh, ready for you to kind of shed a light for a lot of our creators out there and a lot of our clients who, you know, may see um, song trust in the publishing section, but don't fully understand um, why song trust is there um, if they have a publishing entity and like, again, what that should look like. Um, things we kind of, we want you guys to keep in mind. Um, traditionally, the writer's share is paid out directly to the writers by their home collection society. So it, it won't come to, to Song Trust at all. It'll go directly to you. Um, registering your songs helps to ensure co your copyright is protected. So if you register your songs in your Song Trust account, really that's kind of like the first line of defense in making sure that you have copyright ownership in that work. Um, you can also officially copyright your songs with the US Copyright Office uh, if you choose to. Um, Again, discuss those splits with your co-writers early on. Make sure to get a, some, a split agreement on paper signed once the song is finished. This helps during the registration process so everybody knows, again, what their splits are um, in the works. I can't tell you how many times you run into um, split conflicts where people are one writer saying, well, I own 80% in this song and they register it as an 80-20 split. And then you have the co-writer saying, well, no, we agreed to 50-50, and they're trying to register the song at 50%, 50%, and nobody's making any money because the song's now in conflict. So uh, to really to, to avoid that, um, get those split agreements on paper and signed once the song is done so there is no confusion once it's time to get paid. Now, who is Song Trust? I mean, most of you know who Song Trust is. That's how you signed up for the webinar. But Song Trust is the leading technology solution for global music publishing administration. Try saying that 10 times. <laughs> As the world's largest global royalty collection service, Song Trust streamline, streamlines the music publishing administration for more than 2 million songs. We empower more than 300,000 songwriters, 26,000 publishers to collect royalties worldwide. Um, and just last year, we saw a 250% increase in the royalties that we were collecting around the world. So it's a pretty awesome place to be at. Yeah, to we're really proud of that. 
we're getting royalties to clients um, with more accuracy and in a faster timeline. And so that's really helping everyone out. So on this slide, you'll see the ways in which SongTrust as an administration company uh, differs from a traditional publishing deal. Our deal length is a little more flexible. You can cancel any time after one year. Um, we pay four times per year, um, similar to a PRO or a collection society that they pay quarterly. We only register the songs that you add to your song trust account. So our agreement is on a song by song basis. We never own any of your copyright. You keep 100% of that to yourself. And you also have the option to control all of your synchronization rights. If you are ever contacted for a sync request, we forward that to you and you have the final say in whether or not you want that sync to happen. Um, our commission is 15% on all publishing royalties. And as Pierre mentioned, we are the leading administration service um, for royalty collection. So I've said it from the beginning. I'm going to say it again. I love the questions that you guys have been putting in the chat. Um, okay, so for our first question, uh, our first question is, I'm a music composer. Um, I usually require my clients to give me 50% of publishing of any record I compose. Am I doing this correctly? Or should I be taking from the writer's side as well as the composer? Uh, okay, so the first thing to clarify is that the writers, the composition is one half of the song. And of that half, there is a writer's side and a publisher's side. So. Um, for any record that you compose, you are automatically entitled to the writer's share since you are the writer. And on a, um, songs are always negotiated on a case-by-case -case basis. So to ask for 50% of the publishing is a viable thing you can do. Um, you will be collecting more royalties if you do so. And if your client agrees to that, then that is absolutely something that you can continue to do. Our next question is, how far back do you go to collect an independent publisher's music? And this is a great question that we get a lot. Um, it is up to the collection societies that we receive the royalties from. So for example, ASCAP and BMI, um, they collect retroactive royalties for about a year and we can only collect as far back as they can since they are the ones sending us the royalties if they can't collect any farther back than one year ago then we cannot receive royalties from farther than one year ago um, it all depends on which pro you are registered with because they all have different timelines and it also depends on whether or not you are previously in a publishing deal since that may affect your retroactive royalty collection as well um, if retroactive royalties are available for you and they are able to be collect collected, they usually take um, a lot longer than usual to come in. They take about a full year before you start seeing them in your song trust account if they are available. And so, yeah, we get questions about um, retroactive royalties a lot, and it really depends on a lot of factors such as the society, previous publishing deals, and timelines. Um, I got a question. What if a client claims 100% later on after about six months declares that there's a co-writer, do I write song trust to modify? Is this possible? Yes, any changes or updates to splits, um, you can reach out directly to client services and we can um, make those modifications to those splits, um, get those re-registered at the societies at the correct splits. And, and again, you can you can do that at any time after you have registered the song in your song trust account. Um, I also see a good question. Do you also collect the royalties from Harry Fox Agency and Sound Exchange? Um, Harry Fox Agency, yes. Sound Exchange deals with the other copyright, um, so they deal with the master recording. So that would be to, uh, we wouldn't handle sound exchange, but we do collect royalties on your behalf from Harry Fox Agency. All right, another great question that I'm seeing here is, does SongTrust collect publishing for both composition and master recording? So 
Master recording and publishing are separate halves of the song. Um, there are, SongTrust is a publishing administrator, so we only collect publishing royalties, which is on the publishing half of the song. The master recording half of the song is usually collected by distributors, for example, DistroKid or CD Baby. So anything that has to do with the master recording um, is handled by the distributor. And SongTrust as a publishing administrator is not involved with the master recording. Another great question that I see is, do we have to have an LLC? It's not have to, a publishing entity does not have to be an LLC. Some people um, create an LLC separately and then they register that as their publishing company. But as long as you uh, create a publishing entity, for example, with ASCAP or with BMI, that is enough um, to be able to receive your publishing royalties from your main collection society. Few more questions. Um, I saw one. Really, it focuses on what we talked about today. Do writers get mechanical royalties directly from their PRO, or do they need publishing companies or a publisher in order to get any of their mechanical rights? Um, so PROs strictly deal with performance royalties. Um, they wouldn't handle mechanicals at all. Um, you would need a publishing company, company or publishing entity registered at a mechanical collection society. So like an HFA, um, that's where we usually collect your mechanical royalties from here in the US. Um, and there is no writer's share at the, on the mechanical side, it's only a publisher's share. So you would again need some type of publishing representation, again, a traditional publisher, publisher admin um, to collect those royalties for you. Another question, um, if you are an independent publisher who administers the rights for other writers, can I still use SongTrust for the songs from other writers? And the answer is yes. You can add as many songwriters to your SongTrust account as you would like um, for our one-time $100 fee per writer. So if you wanted to add another songwriter that you also represent, you would pay the $100 fee to add them. You would add all of their writer information, their PRO information, and then you could add their publishing information as well. So if they are under your independent publishing entity or if they have their own, you would be able to specify that once you add them into your SongTrust account. I think we have time for two more questions. So let's see. Let's make it a good one. OK, a question that I'm seeing come up a few times is, why does it take um, six to nine months uh, for songs to be registered at all platforms and for royalties to start coming in? And this is because once your songs are added to your SongTrust account, they are sent in an automated system to multiple PROs. Um, we have affiliations with over 45 PROs globally. And once your songs are all registered at the same time and they are sent out automatically to each one of them. And so once they are received by each society, it takes each society, um, they have their own different timeline for how long it takes to register a song. So for example, if you register a song and it is sent to BMI in the US, it is sent to ICE in Europe, and it is sent to APRAPAL in Asia, um, it might take each society a different time to register. So it could take up to eight to 10 weeks at BMI. It might take longer at ICE. At ICE, it might take 10 to 12 weeks. Um, each society is different, so it's hard to know exactly, which is why we give a period of six months to allow enough time for all of the societies that we send the song to to register the song. And then after the song is registered, it does take at least one quarter for the royalties to be collected, you know, for the societies to track and see, okay, this song has this many royalties that were generated last quarter, so let's collect them. And then that usually takes about another quarter. And so those two um, factors combined, we usually give a period of about six to nine months, um, a year in some cases, depending on retroactive royalties. And yeah. And then the last question, um, if I register my, uh, no, no, 
if I have a publishing company set up, can Song Trust administer my publishing? Um, yes, we can. We represent 26,000 publishers. Uh, we can, you can totally represent you. Uh, if you, what I did want to bring up is if you do have a, a personal publishing entity, uh, when you first sign up for Song Trust, please let us know. We, we need all that information so that, um, we can get your works as properly and as quickly registered at the societies as possible. So if you have a publishing entity, um, let us know. If you didn't do it at the initial sign up, it's perfectly fine. We can add that information uh, for you at any point and get that over to the society so those works are properly re registered and there's no, um, no stop in the flow of revenue that's owed to you. Um, Again, I, I get that so much that I felt like I really had to get that PSA out there. If you have a personal publishing entity, please let us know so we can get that registered in your song trust account today. Okay, um, a few quick last questions. I have really easy answers. If I have a publishing company set up, can song trust administer my publishing? The answer is yes. If I register my song with Song Trust, should I also register my song at the US Copyright Office? So the definition of a copyright is once a work is in a tangible form, so for example, you make a record and you record it, that is technically copyrighted. Registering it with the US Copyright Office is just an additional measure you can take in the event that you feel you may need it. Registering your song with Song Trust is a great way to prove or show in case any legal situation comes up that this song was registered by this date. So it is recommended registering your song at the US Copyright Office is completely optional. Um, do writers get mechanical royalties directly from their PRO? Um, in most cases, no. Um, mechanical royalty or performance rights organizations usually pay performance royalties. Um, and in order to receive mechanical royalties, for example, in the US, that would have to come from a company such as HFA, the Harry Fox Agency. Um, in Europe, that would be come from STEMRA, uh, the partner organization for Buma STEMRA. So generally, uh, mechanical royalties do not come from PROs. And let's see if we can find couple more questions. Um, how do you guys know how to track the music? So for the most part, um, that is done by the PROs and mechanical collection societies. Um, the ISRC, which is released by your distributor, is a great way to track music for mechanical royalties. Um, that's necessary um, for mechanical collections to track them. So we do have a great um, Spotify tool that if your songs are released on Spotify, you can just copy and paste the link into the add a recording section on the songs page. And then that will give us the ISRC from your song from Spotify. And I see that we have questions about registering songs with samples. And in that case, um, in the event that you are using samples specifically from Tracklib, we do have an article um, that on our help center that gives you Tracklib's um, publishing entity name and IPI number so that you can attribute a share of their sample to them. So for example, let's say you use a, a Tracklib sample in a song and you're giving it 10%. You would then add Tracklib Publishing as a songwriter. You would put their first name as Tracklib and the last name as Publishing. And then uh, you, could, you can look up their IPI number on our help center. And that is how you would register um, a song with a sample specifically from Tracklib. Um, if you are registering a sample not from Tracklib, uh, it's a similar situation in which you need to give the original songwriters of the sample, you should add them as songwriters in your account and then attribute um, their total percentage. So let's say you are writing a song and you are sampling your friend's song and your friend is the only songwriter. So you would register your friend as a co-writer and you would give them, for example, 10% and then you would give the rest to yourself. That's how you would register a song with the sample. 
Um, our collection, um, is it limited to the US or worldwide? Our collection is worldwide. So depending on where your songs are streaming, for example, if you have a lot of songs streaming in Europe, or if you have a lot of songs streaming in Mexico, um, depending on how much your songs are streaming in worldwide territories, we will be collecting from those territories. Right. And that's all I really, sorry. Um, is it a good idea to register uh, a work at Song Trust if I don't have the master tracks complete yet? Uh, yes, you can still register the works without the master tracks. Um, we typically are looking for the ISRC number, um, but you can still register the works without that information and then add it at a later time. And then, uh, and I have, is your collection limited to the US or worldwide? Our deals are worldwide. Um, let's see. Okay, we have time for one more question. Let's see here. Um, I am not currently registered with a PRO. Does Song Trust pay out to songwriters who are not yet registered with a PRO? And if so, does that collection go back one year from the date of registering with Song Trust? All right. So, in order to collect um, any kinds of royalties, um, registering with a PRO is um, the first step and the most important step. And we do offer that um, once you sign up with Song Trust, we can affiliate you with a PRO if you are not already registered with a PRO. So that is definitely um, something that we can help you out with. However, if you had not been previously registered with a PRO, then collection um, may not go back as far since there, since you weren't registered and the songs weren't registered, songs were not on file. So if the songs were not on file, um, then they can't be uh, the retroactive royalties cannot be collected. However, if you are not currently registered with a PRO, we can uh, we can register you with a PRO of your choice. Um, if you are in the US, you have the choice of affiliating with ASCAP and BMI. If you are outside the US, um, we can affiliate you with IMRO, which is the Irish Collection Society. 